Hello fellow compounders, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you my favorite investment portfolio structures. If you're just starting out or are looking to refine your investment strategy, this video is for you. I'll be sharing my favorite investment portfolio structures for fresh out of school graduates and seasoned investors. I'll also show you how I've structured my investment portfolio over time. We'll cover everything from a simple three fund portfolio to more complex portfolios involving ETFs and individual stocks. At the end of the video, you should be able to identify the best portfolio structure for you. So let's get started. This video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor and you're responsible for your own financial decisions. Part one, the three fund portfolio. When you're just starting out, it's crucial to keep things simple. Trust me, when you're fresh out of school, you have enough things on your plate. I started with a straightforward three fund portfolio. This strategy is perfect for anyone with a portfolio value under $100,000. Here are the three ETFs that I would be using in a three fund portfolio today. Number one, Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, ticker VTI. I would allocate 70% to it. It covers the entire US stock market. Number two, Vanguard's Total International Stock ETF, ticker VXUS. I would allocate 20%. This provides exposure to international markets. And number three, the iShares Short Treasury Bond ETF, ticker SGOB. I would allocate 10% to this ETF. This adds some stability with short-term government bonds. These three funds, VTI, VXUS, and SGOB, gives you a broad market exposure, both domestically and internationally, while also adding a layer of safety with very short-term bonds which I think of as cash. The key here is to diligently dollar cost average. This means you'll invest a fixed amount regularly regardless of the market conditions. Over time, this can reduce the impact of market volatility. Dollar cost averaging works like this. Imagine you invest $500 every month. Some months the market might be up and other months it might be down. But over time, you average out your purchase price. And this can protect you from making a large investment at a market peak. If you had started on January 1st, 2015, investing $500 in this portfolio and added $500 every month, you would now have a portfolio worth $95,857 as of May 31st, 2024. The average annual return for this portfolio over that period was around 9.67%. When I first started investing, this approach helped me stay disciplined and focused. It allowed me to build my portfolio without constantly worrying about market fluctuations. It's a great way to get your feet wet in the world of investing. Accumulating the first 100,000 is challenging, but check out this video on how to do it. Part two the core satellite approach. When your portfolio grows beyond $100,000, you may want to add other investments and maybe pick your own stocks. To me, it makes investing more interesting and fun. This is where the core satellite approach comes in. I started using this method as my portfolio began to grow. Here's how it works. You have two portfolios. One is your course portfolio, which basically has index ETFs. And second, you have a satellite portfolio where you have your individual stock selections. The core portfolio will have an allocation of assets between 50 to 90% and your satellite portfolio will have the difference. For this example, I'll use 75% allocation to the core portfolio and a 25% allocation to the satellite portfolio. The core portfolio will consist of the original three ETFs from the three fund portfolio plus one more, which is the QQQM. Invesco's NASDAQ 100 ETF. Adding QQQM introduces a text-focused element to your portfolio. The allocation I'd use in the core portfolio would be like this. VTI 65%, VXUS 15%, SGOV 5% and QQQM 15%. Now to the 25% allocated to the satellite portfolio. The satellite portfolio will have a selection of 12 individual stocks. This is what I call a basketball team portfolio where you have your starting five and bench players. In the basketball team portfolio, the idea is to carefully select individual stocks that you believe have high growth potential. This should be companies that you understand well and have confidence in. In my case, it's the tech sector, financial services, real estate, and quick service restaurants. Here's an example of the core satellite basketball team portfolio. For the core portfolio, we allocate 75% into VTI, VXUS, SGOV, and QQQ. M. And the satellite portfolio will allocate 25% in Berkshire Hathaway, Apple, Markel Group, Amazon, Nvidia, Alphabet, Johnson & Johnson, Starbucks, JP Morgan Chase, Chipotle Mexican Grill, and Lockheed Martin. This approach allows you to maintain a solid foundation with your core ETFs 
while also allowing you the flexibility to pursue higher returns with individual stocks. It's a great way to balance stability and growth. Part three, the advanced core satellite approach. Once your portfolio reaches the $1 million mark, it's time to take things up a notch. Here's how I transitioned to manage a larger portfolio effectively. I continued using the core satellite portfolio, but expanded it a bit. Please note that this approach should only be used if you're extremely interested in investing and have the time to take care of the portfolio. In my case, I'm a full-time investor and I love investing. If you're not a full-time investor, I highly suggest keeping the previous core satellite basketball portfolio or the simple three fund portfolio. For this case, the advanced core satellite, in the core portfolio, I suggest allocating between 50 to 80% of your assets. In my case, I'm allocating 50% of the assets. I'm also adding two more ETFs to the previous core portfolio. These are SCHD and VNQ for dividend and real estate exposure. Here are the allocations I'm using for the core portfolio. VTI, 50%, that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. VXUS, the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, 15%. SGOV, the iShares Short Treasury Bond ETF, 3%. QQQM, Invesco's NASDAQ 100 ETF, 15%. SCHD, that's Schwab's U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, 12%, and VNQ, the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, 5%. By adding SCHD and VNQ, we introduce dividend-paying stocks and real estate into the mix. This not only provides income through dividends, but also adds another layer of diversification. Now, for the satellite portfolio, we're taking a stock portfolio with the 50% allocation of the assets. This time, we're thinking in terms of an NFL football team roster of around 50 stocks. This is the football team portfolio. The top 10 stocks get around 50% of the funds allocated to this satellite portfolio. These are the star players. The next 10 stocks get 30% of the funds. These are the core supporting team. And the next 10 stocks get 15% of the allocation. This is the emerging talent. And the remaining 20 stocks get 5% allocation. This is a practice squad. These are potential high risk, high reward plays, but in my case, I use these 20 stocks more like a watch list. These are stocks that I wanna keep tabs on. So by diversifying across more stocks, you spread out the risk while allowing for upside potential. The key is to allocate funds based on the confidence and potential of each stocks. Your top 10 stocks should be your most solid investments, while the practice squad can include more speculative picks, or in my case, I use them as my watch list. Here's an example of the core satellite NFL team portfolio. You may pause the video to see the full roster. Part four, tips for managing your portfolio. All right, now that you have a solid understanding on how to structure your portfolio at different stages, here are some additional tips to keep in mind. Number one, regular rebalancing. Ensure that your portfolio maintains the desired allocation by periodically rebalancing. I do it once a year. Rebalancing is crucial because over time, some investments will grow faster than others, skewing the original allocation. By rebalancing, you bring your portfolio back in line with your desired risk level. For instance, if your tech stocks have outperformed, they might be make up a larger portion of your portfolio than it was intended, thus increasing your risk. To rebalance, you can either sell some of your outperforming assets or add more to the underperforming ones. The goal is to maintain your target allocation. This might seem tedious, but it's essential for risk management. Number two, stay informed. Keep up with market trends and news, especially for your individual stocks. Make it a habit to read financial news follow market trends, and stay updated on the companies you've been invested in. This doesn't mean that you have to react to every market move, but being informed helps you make better decisions. I use the alerts on Seeking Alpha. I have the link in the description. Number three, long-term perspective. Focus on long-term growth rather than short-term gains. A long-term perspective is what separates successful investors from the rest. The market will have ups and downs, but if you stay focused on your long-term goals, you'll be less likely to make impulsive decisions based on short-term market movements. Check out the video I did about long-term investing using a coffee can portfolio. Risk management. Diversify to manage risk and avoid putting all your eggs in one basket. This is assigned into the portfolio structure already. It's accomplished in the core portfolio by using index ETFs. However, in a stock portfolio, don't pick all the stocks from one same industry. Risk management is about diversification. By spreading your investments across different asset sectors and geographies, you reduce the risk of a single event significantly impacting your entire portfolio. Number five, continuous learning. Never stop learning about investment strategies and financial markets. The financial world is always evolving. 
New investment opportunities, strategies, and tools are constantly emerging. By staying curious and continually educating yourself, you'll be better prepared to adapt and thrive in changing market conditions. Remember that the key to successful investing is to stay informed, stay disciplined, and keep your eye on your long-term goals. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you structure your portfolio or if you have any questions. Remember to always be compounding. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.